Greetings, Dan Halligan with KNT Games. Welcome back to a second installment of Ben Hur. <laughs> Actually, uh, a playthrough between Family Howard and Family York. We're going to be doing season two in this video. And where we left off is we left off with an Essentials Courtship Reveal. We now have York as the first player in season two, and they're going to leverage those consecutive turns to get this marble floor and put them in a enviable position as it relates to the second season courtship. If we sort of look at the overall lay of the land, we have Howard looking very good coming off a season one courtship victory and a first milestone. And York might have been looked at to be in a, in a bad spot, but think about the potential recovery in this season. We're going to get the marble floor for York here. That's going to win them the second season courtship. I don't see how. I guess it's statistically possible. I don't see how that's not going to happen. So we're going to win that second season courtship. That's a nice recovery from a close loss. And if you think about it, we both, uh, both players here have flipped four tiles to their backside. Given that York is the first player, all they need to do is to flip three tiles consecutively in Season 2, and they're going to win that milestone. For flipping seven improvement tiles to the Rose side. So that's a very nice recovery if you think about it. If they can maybe cap off the end of second season by getting the last servant, the hall boy, that they need for this uh, objective, I would say that York has rallied quite well. Make a couple of notes. First of all, I've had people who've pointed out quite correctly that I made a mistake in my play in the first video by using Lord Mortimer, who has a prestige rating of two, when Family York was at a reputation of level one. Apologize for that. Apparently walking and chewing gum is a slowly acquired skill for me. I don't think I did great violence to the game. I mean, what would have happened is the young lady would have been played and the pass would have still happened. We would have had one invite as opposed to two reputation, but I don't think that's earth shattering, but it was a mistake and I apologize for that. Secondly, I didn't expend my useful man who was assisting with the village fair at the end of season one. So uh, he goes into expended service. Let's... Uh, Pull over here, focus in on York, and get started with Season 2. Let me zoom in. Well, before I zoom in, I'm going to uh, rotate service, and we don't have anything in uh, Step 2, and so we're going right to Host Activity, and we're going to go to the Croquet Lawn. Before I zoom in and lose sight of this carriage house, I'm going to use this carriage house to invite three people instead of two, so the ability of the carriage house, which is a new tile, is that I can adjust up or down that count of guests that are invited to an activity. I have to remain loyal to the, to the type of guest. Gentry is everyone, so I've got great flexibility. If that was two ladies, for example, I would be able to have three ladies or one lady. So you have to stay consistent when you add. But right now we're gonna do that and we're gonna do that and that's going to allow me to invite three guests. So we'll zoom in here and get those guests. Let's line that up. Let's get those guests. We're going to have Thomas McMillan, who brings 200 pounds, which is very nice indeed. We're also going to have the Viscount York. And uh, I like, uh, I'd like to try to get to the Fifrau with I'd like to try to get to the Fifrau with my reputation. If I can get that to a level three reputation with my cook who will be rotating into service, I'm not going to get there this turn. But next turn, I should be able to bring the Fifrau on board uh, with my cook, Mrs. Patmore. So what do we have? We have 400 pounds plus 200 is 600 pounds. We have two reputation. I forgot my lady's maid, scold, and I forgot my valet. Pay attention, Dan. So there we go. We have that. We have now to shop in the market. We need 700 to go ahead and acquire a game changer. 
in the marble floor monument. We're going to go up here and grab a reminder tile. Even though we have in the order of the play a reminder in step two about monuments, I like to put that there because I'm a forgetful guy. Yeah. Back out and take a look at that builder's market because I slid down and the first tile I pulled out of the bag was the walled garden, which I want to talk about for two reasons. One, it's a promo tile, uh, a backer developed tile. And this says you can place a cook together premium ingredients for a special menu. So when a cook's not going to be used for an activity, they're going to prepare for a future activity and they're going to get you to reputation. But the other reason I want to show you that is because the service reserve is in effect and that slides down. And the second one I pulled out was the Queen Suite, which is one of my favorite tiles. A single, a single prestige guest is played, a single favor is doubled, and it turns into a monument. So I'm putting that out there. First turn for Howard in season two, round six. And Howard has their eye on something that's going to really help to empower these upstairs downstairs servants and that is the servants quarters my favorite tile of all sitting there in the service tile reserve at its least expensive spot that's a big deal and at the same time Howard hopes to accomplish a couple other things first of all when you have a courtship victory use that Fairchild card you certainly don't want to sit on that so Elizabeth Fairchild is going to be coming to visit but First and foremost, let's rotate service. The round six round has no special event on it. We don't have a monument or a servant's hall. So we're going to get busy flipping a tile, and that is whist in the front parlor. Put our housekeeper up there, and along comes Miss Elizabeth Fairchild with the lady of the house. The reason I'm doing the lady of the house, first of all, I'm somewhat limited on my ladies maids when I say somewhat limited I have one of them and since she's there I can only play these two cards to meet the requirement of the two ladies uh, and that's gonna that's gonna go on the Fairchild card but secondly I want to get into casual guests that's gonna allow me to take advantage of this laundry if I can get into the right kind of casual guest it's gonna be a big deal because I'll be able to refresh that casual guest quite a few times throughout the game. So we also are going to take our head housemaid and we're going to screen that prestige guest invite. I'm going to hold on to the cook because I think I'd like to have Baron Narishkin visit and I don't think I'm going to be at the level of reputation I'll need to be to invite him directly. The reason is I have only 300 pounds and that servant's quarters, which I'm going to bring over here for me to stare at and drool over, is 400 pounds. The service tower reserve is 300 pounds. Let me give you a look there. It's 300 pounds. And we still have the modifiers on the tile. Now, I could have done another play, but I think this best meets our goals. We're getting five reputation, so I think I can spare two reputation in order to get into that servant's quarters and make this play. So... Let's start with money. We have none. Go to reputation. We have two reputation here and three is there. <coughs> That's five. Excuse me. We're going to go up to reputation level three. One full revolution of the wheel is five. And then for invites, we've got two casual guest invites. Ah, That's one of my favorite new cards. Let me read that. Armstrong Pew, Esquire. Heir to a small seaside estate in Wales, the taciturn Mr. Pew has deplorable manners. He's a new type of unsavory guest called a curmudgeon. And, and does not that mug just shout curmudgeon? Not a bad unsavory guest. I mean, he, he brings a little bit of money with just a small ding on the reputation. Uh, but I think I'm going to go with Lady Elise Gilmore. Not, not necessarily the card I wanted um, from, a second from a second level casual guest. I was hoping to get a prestige invite, but didn't get it. So let me go ahead and put her in the active hand, and let's recycle this. And then we have look at two, keep one on the prestige guest side. 
Well, we <laughs> we have the the Russian connection going on because here's Count Dmitry Konstantinov. Um, wow. Holy smoke. Let me read the new card. The uh, Ambrose of the Marquess of Tetbury, owner of much of Bath, the Marquess frequents Rousley. Rousley to fly fish, his passion. And that's got a prestige guest invite. I'm going all Russian. Man, this is the second time in making videos that the Marquess has been passed over for another guest of lower reputation. <laughs> ah, there's always a story in this game. Turns out that the Howards have uh, quite the Russian connection going on. So I have completed there, so I'm going to, I'll just go ahead and break down here, even though we normally don't do that on camera. And I want to acquire this from the reserve, but I only have 300 pounds. I'm going to trade away two of my reputation and go back to level two in order to secure the greatest tile ever made in the history of games, the servants' quarters. Put that in my discard pile. Here's my active hand, and we're done. We're getting ready to move from round six to round seven, and my second error rears its ugly head. I know that some of you have seen this and have been yelling at the screen. In season one, we obviously had a wayward Lord Mortimer, and in season two, or at least at the end of season one, I was supposed to discard one of the objective cards, one of the five that were part of initial setup. So I need to do that now one round late. So let's take a look as I look at the objective cards for York. I'm, I'm obviously working on this, and in fact, I'm going to try to get the barn very soon in order to complete this objective. Uh, this is also another objective I've talked about. Um, this objective here is looking very good. Once I get the barn, I'll be one away from getting that. So I'm not inclined to think of these two objectives very highly. Uh, I'm probably never going to get five estate tiles. I don't know that in an extended play game. It's certainly possible but I'm going to discard this card right here. And we come over and we look at Howard's five cards and we need to get rid of one of these. 13 servants, right now I have nine servants, so I'm two hiring actions away from that five victory points. Mm, not sure about that. Boy, that's a hard one there, although more reachable in an extended play game. Um, this one here, You know, I haven't been very conscientious in paying attention <laughs> to my objectives because, look, <laughs> I've got this objective sitting right here. I swear, walking and chewing gum, haven't been keeping the objective cards in mind, or I think that I would have played a little differently as far as regarding that. I certainly hope York doesn't take it, uh, but I think York's going after that barn. I am going to... I'm going to pass on this one. I just think that this is going to be very difficult. Well, you know, it's only one, two, three, four, five, six tiles. Wow. Um, and the service tile reserve makes that a real possibility. I think I'm going to... Oh, and that's a good one, too, because flower room and, and there's a lot of garden options. Son of a gun. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead. I think this hand handcuffs me a little bit, and I get better options over there. So, apologize for that. We do deal out the objective cards when we move at the beginning of step two, as we'll see when we pull back over here. Step two, we have a round track check, a rotated service, but my point being is that's when we will draw our two objective cards. So let's settle in for... York's turn on round seven, and we rotate service. Get this group over here and rotate here. Yeah. Okay, now we move on to step two. We uh, check our round track. We have an objective card draw. Let's draw our two objective cards. Hey, look at that. I already have a monument. That baby's a winner. And prestige, nothing I'm really working hard on now, but 
one out of two of those very strong so I'm glad to have that and then we have a monument so let's go ahead and give ourselves and we get some focus give ourselves a point of reputation very close to level three now I want to I want to make a comment that anyone who thinks that because of the thematic material that this isn't a, a heavier game just consider the turn that York's faced with. So York's trying to get to that milestone. To do that right now, if you let me slide over here a little bit. To do that to get to the milestone, we obviously this is our next play, quite obviously. I could play here because this useful man, as one of his abilities, could temporarily to temporarily lower that to a two. But I've got, a, I've got a, a separate problem, which is that I don't have five ladies to play those two. I have three ladies, and one is not, well, if I can get reputation, which I won't be getting here, but I will actually tick up with my monument next turn to get to level three so that I could play her there, but I don't have any other ladies. The only chance is I would have to draw two ladies on my whist parlor play of mother and daughter. If I drew two ladies, then I could I could get to the five frau. But here's the other problem. I can't buy the barn because I have only 100 pounds. These two ladies don't generate any income. And I was going would have to trade away to reputation, which would put me back down to here after uh, next turn I, I would still be short of level three. Oh, the wheels I'm gonna have to pass on grabbing the barn and hope for two ladies in my invites for my game of whist in the parlor to have a shot at locking up that milestone ahead of Howard who also may have some limitations we'll see where we lie when we get over there so I have the housekeeper over here I'm hoping to use the cook next turn so I'm not going to play her just I could play the cook when I'm not inviting somebody let me make that point I'm assuming everybody knows that the cook always generates one reputation she's producing wonderful food that benefits the family's reputation so I have that plan for next turn if I can get lucky on my invites I'm going to go ahead here in order to give me the best chance to get two ladies. I'm going to screen that invite. And oh, good news. I wasn't taking into account that I could discount that barn by a hundred and get it to be a hundred. Wow, I can make I can make that's me rubbing my hands. I can make this happen. So we go to reputation. Well, look at that. I forgot the reputation for the parlor, which really bailed me out of not being able to acquire the barn because I get three reputation I could have traded away and still been able to go to the Gable Conservatory so uh, I didn't take that into account but that's just another layer to the cake so we took our three reputation and we now have two sets of screened invites we need one of these to be a lady and it is indeed oh we're lucky so we've got that even though we're passing on a rather nice guest a really nice guest here and the second the second invite it's got to be a lady yes boom oh this cool this is a new guy this is sir angus canning baronet Pauper, the aged, destitute baronet, is the stepbrother of the unfortunate 19th century prime minister. Um, not going to take the baronet. We did it! Is that cool or what? I'll break down here off camera, but we will make a purchase with 100 pounds and the use. of the useful man gonna pop out here got my fourth tile got my barn completed that objective useful man you're gonna go 
Howard's turn, round seven. Let me pop out a little bit here just to make a couple points. One, my, my glorious servants' quarters, which once we rotate service, our first step, means that every one of those servants is in play. I mean, only one of those three, but what flexibility, what, what glory. And more importantly, developer dementia that I have let this somehow drift down into the cheapest spot in the builder's market. I don't think that's ever happened, and I've played more games than any human being because this is one of the most coveted tiles. The amount of reputation, the amount of victory points that it takes only two players to flip that to the glorious seven uh, victory points. I mean, <laughs> not to mention I have a, that's a 12 victory point tile that I ignored. So much for... Um, playing a long, slow, methodical game without mistakes. But I haven't been punished by that because really all the acquisitions in the builder's market have been quite logical according to the, uh, the needs of the particular players. I mean, if I wasn't forgetful. So that's my, this is my focus. That is my focus of turn of round seven. So first things first, let's take a look at our two objective cards that we're going to be adding to our objective card display nice this is nice particularly in an extended play game you can really make some hay with um, prestige guests so that's a valuable card already started too bad it's not like five victory points for each russian guest <laughs> and the epicurean group really not too exciting we do have an essentials courtship out maybe we play some of those tiles, but it's going to be a long hike to get to the imported marble floor, and it's eight victory points. So I eh, give give that an A, plus C minus. Put those over there. So let's pop in here and see how we're going to get this done. And it's not as easy as one might think. I hate the notion of playing a tile a second time. Let me slide over here a little bit. I hate the notion of playing a tile a second time, but I'm probably out of the sweepstakes. I can see what um, I can see what York is doing and I'm probably out of the sweepstakes for that second milestone. So I'm gonna have to go to the bowling green a second time. Hate to do it, but going to the retiring room, I don't have a female that's going to be productive in the way of money and I am not letting another turn go by without getting that potential 12 point victory. It's almost a certainly a 12 point tile. So we'll go ahead and we'll put our footman on the bowling green and let's um, let's tap. That gets me 200. I can get to 400 there and maybe get a little other heavy lifting done by having Count Dmitri Konstantinov join Earl Howard on the Bowling Green. Let me provide service here. I need to because Count is prestige rating 3. I need to drop that on the Bowling Green. I also am going to show you the first use of the Hall Boy. The first use of the Hall Boy is that I will place him on the 200 pound favor of Earl Howard and that will make that worth 300 pounds and and then I will take the useful man I got to make sure yeah I'm okay well I do have the servants quarters but I have to make sure to, he's available for every village fair and obviously the servants quarters does make that a possibility but I'm gonna play it safe he is fine we're two rounds away from a service there so there we go three uses of the upstairs downstairs servants let's break it down we got 200 plus 200 plus 100 we have 500 coming out of the bank there we get to reputation we do have one reputation for the cooks wonderful skill set we also have two invites oh and you know what let's make it a let's make it a four for four on the upstairs downstairs servants and i'm going to drop that on the casual guest invite so let's go ahead and look at two and keep one on the casual guest and this was my oh, well you know American heiresses as much as that they are culturally unsavory boy you gotta love their wallet into the pile we'll make sure to get rid of her before the end of the game 
well, we will exploit her in the interim. And then we're going to go here and look at a, ah, a promo card. Very interesting. So let me read this. So I'm going to get my glasses. Don't go anywhere. I'm back, and we have Thomas Allen Hurt Esquire. The clumsy Mr. Hurt has a pronounced stutter, but over time all come to adore his warmth and sincerity. So on draw, I lose three victory points, or three uh, reputation. Holy smoke, one, two, three. But, you know, I think this is the first time I've actually ended up playing him. I think some, a couple other people have had him in games I've played playtesting games, uh, but he uh, will get a VP card. Now, um, I believe, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe he goes into the discard pile and not the active hand. I don't have that rule set in front of me, but I'm almost positive that's the case, is there's somewhat of a delay while people get to know him. So that's unfortunate. He's in my discard pile, but I uh, you know, that's some. sometimes things happen. And do we have any, uh, nope, nothing else left to do. I'll break down off camera, but we will purchase for 300 pounds, grab two back, this enormously important cabinet of curiosities. I'll flash out so you can see that. And the organizer, beautiful. And end of turn, we'll go to round eight, York turn. So we have round eight, York's turn, and I'm going to begin the turns now at the furthest distance away because our tableaus are growing and we'll zoom in when we play. So, you know, I, I want to keep in mind the capacity, and, you know, interestingly enough, I didn't necessarily need to hit the bonanza at the end of that parlor play where I got the two lady guests because I do have the carriage house. you got to keep in mind the capacity of some of these new upstairs downstairs and even the promo tiles they really give you a unique flavor to your domestic staff and what you're able to do my favorite part of the game is the domestic staff and the way that 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 works and so i i could have in and in fact when i think about it because as i look at the three ladies we we know what my play is my play is to go to the Gable Conservatory. And as I look at my three ladies, uh, I don't have three ladies maids. <laughs> so let, let me rotate service here. So we rotate service. We got nothing on the round track. So no need, no need there to do anything. Uh, we do have a monument. Let's add a point of reputation, no servants hall. And so now as we look to host that Gable Conservatory, these these three ladies, I, I can't do it. So I'm, I'm going to have to, to play this Gable Conservatory. I'm going to have to reduce the count of ladies that can attend down. Well, of course, the Fifrau is coming. My heart, my my heartbeat is sped up at the thought of the Fifrau visiting with her wonderful favors. And I think I'll do here. So. The Honorable Charlotte Woods back in the deck, and we have the Five Frau and Miss Catherine Eden. Uh, we're going to have a lady's maid there, but I'm going to have to spend three reputation, uh, one, two, three, to get the housekeeper out of um, the servants' quarters. And let me zoom in. I think it's time to do that. Slide over a bit. And... Um, that takes care of that. We reduce that by one. I'm okay with doing that because we have three reputation here. Plus, we're going to get a reputation from our cook who's going to entice the lovely Fifrau to visit our humble estate. So I'm actually going to gain one reputation in this turn, which is, is not too bad. And um, let's go ahead. Anything else we get here? We can't grab anything from servants' quarters, so we're good. We'll start out with the money. We have 400 money. And reputation, we have three plus one is four. We get one, two, three, whoop, one, two, three, four. So we recovered nicely and have a nice lead on um, 
you can't see it. Let me pop out. Ha, 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 ha. He's with the stuttering guy. Man, look at what happened to his reputation. Now, he may hurt us later, but I can laugh now. So uh, we get to invites, and we have uh, an invite here. And interesting. So this is a promo card. This is the Lady Isabel Hawthorne, the generous but opinionated lady. Isabel decries the plight of domestic staff and refuses service on principle. Any casual guests that accompany her to an event, none of them require service. Boy, that's great to couple with a big essentials tile that allows you to invite five, six, or seven people. So that's fantastic. Let me refocus there. Come on back in. And I think we're done. Now let's make our purchase. And I want to show you what I got my eye on. There's a lot of great tiles in this market, but I'm focused on the billiard room. First of all, that's a great tile. It's a money tile for only 400. It's a steal. And I am going to be, let me come back over here. I am going to be ticking up to reputation four at the start of next turn, which means I can step into that. I have the gentleman here to play. So um, so that's the play to me. I love the backside. That's the backside with 600 pounds. I don't mind uh, tapping that tile twice. So I will break down off camera. So round eight, Howard Turn, and what populated in the market was a, a humble fence paddock. But, you know, we're close to having the level one or the prestige rating one tile reserve kick in at the end of the next courtship. So that will not clog our market really really a nice effect look look at the pyramid of servants that's what happens when you play four servants in one turn so let's rotate this over fortunately we can tap one of those servants but this looks to be a pretty limited turn so on Howard's turn here um, uh, Howard's in a bit of a pickle the only thing they really can play given this current disposition of servants really the only thing they can play without replaying something again is this retiring room. Howard has sort of cornered itself in the, uh, the, Howard lacks a path. You always want to have that nice um, improvement tile acquisition that matches your growing reputation. And, and this is a bad spot to be in. And we passed relative, we got, a, we got a decent size active hand. We passed not too long ago. I don't really want to pass and higher, although I could find some use also for one of those scarce ladies maids. Um, so this this is going to be a little bit of a grim turn, but I, I am going to go to the retiring room um, because I have to, but the thought process here is just to get into that breakfast room to sort of reestablish my path. And I need a lady, so I'm going to go with Lady Elise Gilmore, play that there. I'm going to steal the useful man from servant's quarters due to my tile here. Let me zoom in a little bit now that we've had a, see, uh, a look from out far, and I'll put that on that breakfast room. So. We're done there. Take a look at money, none. Take a look at reputation three. Try to repair our reputation a little bit. And that's a simple turn, but it is a flip of a tile and it gives us a path for next turn. So a little bit of a hiccup for our friends, the Howards, but we do, we do get a path and that is in the breakfast room. And maybe we can use the laundry to grab back uh, Lady Elise Gilmore, because she's a good one with her two reputation. We'll have to see when we get there. Going back to York, I'll break down off camera, and we are on another village fair. So we'll come back here, we'll flash out, we will rotate service, we will take our uh, point of reputation flipping up here to level four. We will take our useful man, we'll put him on 
the private study in order to enable 500 pounds and two reputation for the village fair. Um, and we are going to host, as we know, the billiards room. Oh. Have to do it. One, two, three, drop down to three. And now that's an interesting point for anybody new to the game. Come in here. What matters when you're qualifying a tile to play is what the reputation is after step two. After step two, my reputation was four. I then, in hosting the activity, and I, I sort of am simultaneously providing service, a habit of mine, after that step two, I revealed my uh, family's inability to provide the proper service by having to do a little juggling of staff in order to get, get the, uh, the butler into play. So that's uh, just an interesting um, rules note. So now we're going to go to these three gentlemen. Let me do this so that we can see them. So Lord Mortimer, the Lord Mortimer making a legitimate visit as opposed to the one that was an illegitimate, along with Reginald Hopkins in the the heir to the York estate. And so we do need to do this. We do not have an invitation in order to use her. And we're ready to roll. We have 400 here and 100, so we get 500. Look at that. What a nice monetary turn coupled with the village fair. We have, um, we're going to take a point of reputation there, two points of reputation there, one, two, three. So we recovered from having to scramble on the butler. And we're done. This will be a quick breakdown, so I'll go ahead and do it. We'll flip that tile. And we will put him over there, put the useful man up there. And what we want to do is immediately take, we're going to move this up here, one of our markers because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could have done that last turn. Somebody was yelling at me off camera. I know it. I can take that and I'm going to place that up there claim that eight victory points. So let's look at the market. Looks like, zoom in there, looks like I did not repopulate after that breakfast room purchase. Let's reach over to the bag. And a riding stables. You know, it's not a bad tile, but not at this time of game. I'm going to look forward to the prestige rating one tile reserve kicking in at the beginning of next season. So we we don't clog the market. With the thousand pounds, so I'm gonna gobble up the queen, the queen suite for 600, gets me 400 on the change. We'll go ahead and not forget to populate right here. We'll grab, ah, another promo tile, the summer house. And um, no service is required on the front side. And the back side has some variable invites, a nice tile. So let's put that there. And let's uh, finish up the season with Howard. Now, Howard has a little bit of a difficulty uh, here. And it comes from his service. So first, let's rotate service. Um, we're going to take the useful man, put that there using the servant's quarters. Put it there as beginning of step two. We have our village fair here. We're going to get 500 pounds and we're going to realize two reputation, which will get us finally to level three, a little bit behind the eight ball on that front. And as I look at my options here, I would have to pay to refresh to get the housekeeper. I would have to pay to refresh her in order to go to the breakfast room, which was my plan. So I think I'm going to hire. I know uh, I still have a bit of an active hand left. I don't know that that's the best plan, but I've got consecutive turns here, so I'm not going to get as burned. And I can actually have a very productive pass, not only getting two servants, 
where I've really been handicapped by not having ladies' maids and use and valets. So I'm going to do that. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Go ahead and play our butler. We're going to hire a valet and a ladies' maid. Do not flip that again. I'm going to expend here. So that completes that hire. We're now at 11 servants, and that objective there has uh, five victory points for 13 servants. I'm going to get into this babbling brook. That is a very, very nice tile. Um, it's got a lot of money up front. It's something I can play, and it flips over to a courtship category we had in the first season. I like that a lot. So that's going to cost 300 get 200 back. The other thing to keep in mind is that uh, not only do I have consecutive turns, but I have a national holiday turn. I'm going to be the first player in Season 3. I'm going to be able to play this Cabinet of Curiosities with the Russians. <laughs> They've both been to the Bowling Green. Now they're going to go look at the uh, collection of specimens that uh, Earl Howard has. So that's going to be a fantastic start and double dip using that national holiday to make that happen. So uh, that is the end of the turn for Howard, and let's go to courtship. This one's going to be a chip shot in favor of York. Let's go look at where the essentials ended up. Eight points for York and zero. One of the characteristics you... I should mention this because it may be of interest. There's patterns. Start tiles aside, they're a little different, but there's patterns to all the rest of the tile. All Essentials tiles have a zero on the front side and victory points on the back side equal to the prestige rating. All service tiles are worth one, front or back side. Again, I'm excluding start tiles, except the barn. The barn has two. All estate tiles have a front side victory points, two less than their prestige rating, and back side victory points, one more than their prestige rating. All prestige tiles have front side victory points one less than their prestige rating and back side victory points two more. So like Cabin of Curiosities, one less. Flip that over, seven, five, two more. All green tiles, and this is a promo tile so it doesn't count because promo tiles break rules. All green tiles have minus one on the front and one more than their prestige rating on the back. So it's a pattern you can anticipate. It makes a courtship tough for essentials because you gotta be flipping tiles unless you get a monument. So we have a winner. And what that means is that the lovely Elizabeth Fairchild, who is in the deck of Howard, rushes back to Alderley Hall, waves at her Aunt Margaret and goes over to the York Estate because I'm still interested in that prestige invite. Charles is not neglected in our gameplay. When, when reputation is the order of the day, he and the young lady represent a whole level. And I may have mentioned this in the previous courtship, but don't, don't fret for Charles. He's a popular guy at certain times. And then we're going to grab a victory point card, and that's a nice one. I can refresh, for example, play Elizabeth and refresh her right away, um, or keep five victory points for endgame scoring. So let's now take a look at which objective card we're going to get rid of. Uh, it's between these two here. It's whether I get the state room or not, or whether I have a prestige play. I've only got one prestige tile. So I'm inclined to think that I'm not going to make much of a prestige play. So I'm going to put that at the bottom. Let's run over here. And this darn thing kept falling off, but we have uh, half of this as far as the nature group group bonus. I have the English garden. I'm two away from that. I have that. I have half of this, and this is productive, and that's easy because uh, the likelihood of a butler's pantry ending up there is high. But I think that's the one I'm going to part with because the others uh, all have better potential. And let's finish with our reserves. And I need to repopulate this market here. 
to start season three. So I'm going to reach in. I'm going to grab a tennis court. So that slides down. But now we activate our to start season three. I'm, I'm getting a little jump before I end this video. Is we take the two tiles that are prestige rating one. We slide those down. Whoops, sorry to mean to bump the camera. And we pull out. Interesting. Two. Now this is interesting because this is obvious, but just to give an idea of the tile sorting numbers. So we have, wow, that's a bad reflection. Sorry, guys. So the tile, let me turn that thing off. So you can see the tile sorting numbers because we have two spots to fill. Now it's obvious two is before five, but if they're tied, we're going to have tile sorting numbers. Let me put that back on and we're going to put that. So we have a little bit of prestige coming out into the market. We have the end of season two and we will begin season three by rolling the variable courtship dice and going from there.